It gives me great pleasure to introduce the founder of our think tank, Senator Mushahid Hussain Sayyid Sahab. Sayyid, uh, Mushahid Hussain Sayyid Sahab is an elected me senator member of Pakistan's parliament. He is currently the chairman the Senate of the Senate Defense Committee, plus a member of the Human Rights, Climate Change, and Foreign Affairs Committees of, par of the parliament. During 2015 to 2018, he served as Chairman Parliamentary Committee on Park China Economic Corridor, CPEC, where he played a pivotal role in, promote, in promoting CPEC, the flagship and pilot project of BRI. Senator Saab has been the Minister for Information, Culture and Tourism. He is the founder of two think tanks, Islamabad Policy Research Institute, and Pakistan China Institute, the first think tank in Pakistan devoted to Pak China relations and relations within the region. Thank you so much. Thanks. It is both my pleasure and privilege to invite Senator Saab for his address. Thank you. you. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In the name of the Almighty, the Lord of all mankind, the Honorable Chairperson of the Karachi Council of Foreign Relations, Madam Nadra Panjwani Saiba, listening to your speech where you talked of the profound transformation in Africa and your wide-ranging focus, I am reminded of a very famous saying of the great Chairman Mao. When I went to China at the age of 17, about a little over 50 years ago, and I remember he said, women hold half the sky. And I think in Karachi Council of Foreign Affairs, they hold more than half the sky. Because she is a lady of substance, she has been minister, and she also has established a very important hospital in the name of her late esteemed mother, Zainab Banjwani Hospital, which is doing a great job for women. My good friend, my old, I would say, comrade, a person, whom I have always respected, Ikram Segal, an authentic war hero, the first Pakistani prisoner of war to escape from an Indian prison in the 1971 war. We are proud of you, Ikram, because Ikram has traversed a long journey from Khaki to Mufti. He was a, he was a military man, and now he's a certified civilian Democrat. But one thing I've seen in him, whether it's the civilian system or the military regimes, mindset to Eki, we do not like criticism. We like Khushamad. He speaks truth to power. So more power to your pen and more power to your voice. Your Excellency Sami Abdullah Al Khanjari, the Honorable Consul General of Oman. And Oman is an example that size does not equal strength. The Omani empire extended to Africa in Zemzibar was part of the Omani empire with the brought in Muslim. And I remember when I first met the foreign minister of Oman five years ago at a conference in Muscat, I said, uh, it was a very formal meeting, and I said, Excellency, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity of CPEC he said, Excellency, I don't understand what you're saying. CPEC? I said, CPEC is China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. He said, what did we do? I said, you gave us Gawadar 50 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if there was no Gawadar, there was no CPEC. So, you know, and, with, and I had, as a student in Washington, I had the great honor and uh, opportunity of meeting His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, handsome, dynamic person, because I had been doing research on Oman, and I mentioned about Salala also. Tariq Ikram Saab, sir, you have given a very, you have strategic clarity. So I'll say, please, give me your CV right now. I'll send it to the SIFC, because people <laughs> like you are needed. And you said that I have the ear of people in Islamabad. But I'm reminded of what happened in the Bible when Jesus Christ says, they hear but they do not listen. <laughs> but anyway, we will focus on that. Where is Qadr Jafar Sahib, my old friend? And uh, Khadam Ali Shah Sahib, it's good to see you, sir. He's a thinking, uh, I would say, politician, 
He was close to Benazir Bhutto Sahib. He's written a book also, and uh, I've enjoyed reading his book. And Kadir Jafar Sahib, thank you for being here. You were a very successful High Commissioner of Pakistan in uh, uh, London, and I still remember he committed blasphemy according to British standards, because in the 2002 World Cup at the Pakistan Society annual dinner, he announced, then the World Cup was being played the next day, and every Briton was there. It was. England versus Brazil. He said, look here, I am supporting Brazil <laughs> because I am the Consul General of Brazil. So the British, uh, all the uh, elite were shaken up, but still you had the courage to speak your convictions. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure. Dr. Junaid Saab, thank you for coming also. Uh, this is an initiative which, whose time has come, the Pakistan Africa Institute for Development and Research. And there are three reasons uh, I want to give you the context for that. One is Pakistan's historic relationship. You see, often we we'll link things with money, with uh, kind of dollars and cents. The most important thing in the lives of nations is their role in leading on issues, ideas, and initiatives. After all, it was the idea of Pakistan, 1930, Allama Iqbal, which became a living reality under the leadership of the great Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. The idea of Islam, which spread so wide. So ideas are the ones which move history. And if, even Khadim Ali Shah Sab, Abhi Pran and Leftist, hai, Marx, Lenin, <laughs> Engels, says, uh, Mao, these are ideas which shape history. And in Pakistan's case, I was in the United Nations and I was accosted by the foreign minister of Eritrea and he said, you're from Pakistan, he said, Excellency, I want to thank you for your support. I said, what did we do? He said, you supported us, the first country in 1952, the right of self-determination of Eritrea. This is Pakistan, five years after the creation of Pakistan. So the thing is that you should be strong, you dumb. be strong. It's not linked with a uh, lot of money or even a nuclear bomb. But if you have that clarity and you have that uh, conviction and taking it forward. In the 50s, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you, Pakistan was the one country that provided diplomatic passports to the liberation leaders of Morocco, Muhammad al-Faraj, Algeria, Farhat Abbas, Tunisia, Habib Borgiba Jr. They had offices in this great city of Karachi, it was the capital, and they had offices in the Pakistan mission in the United Nations. We were the voice of freedom in Africa in the first 10 years of her own independence. We had no money, we had no oil. And when I went to Tunisia, in uh, 1990, to interview Yasser Arafat. He was then in exile from Beirut there. I was amazed. Muhammad Ali Jinnah wrote, Sir Zafrullah Causeway. They had honored our leaders because of that role. And we continued that. Zimbabwe, the first country to provide weapons to Zimbabwe, to the ZANU, uh, Zimbabwe African National Union led by Robert Mugabe, Pakistan and China. Nelson Mandela, African National Congress, Pakistan, leading, providing money and arms. To. So the first air chief of Zimbabwe was Air Marshal Azim Daud Pota Sahib. Azim Daud Pota. You can see that. Chief Justice of Gambia, Ali Nawaz Chauhan. Chief Commissioner of Uganda, Mia Riazuddin. So, you know, and teachers, doctors, specialists in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda, in different parts. And that's why this is an important footprint of Pakistan that we have played that role. And as mentioned by Tariq Ikram Sahib and Nadra Panjwani Sahib, Africa is the land of opportunity. It's a happening place, 55 countries, you mentioned $725 billion in terms of trade, 
So Pakistan has to have that role. And I'm very happy to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and Rwanda have now opened up embassies in Islamabad. So we have 15 <laughs> African embassies. And Pakistan has opened up five different embassies in Africa, including Rwanda. So we have about 20 missions now in Africa. So this, our diplomatic footprint is expanding. So that is a very important area. And I think that uh, it's not just government to government. It has to be an initiative where trade, investment, business to business, people to people, that has to be taken forward. The second context when I talk of launching PIDAR, the Pakistan Africa Institute for Development and Research, the first think tank on Africa and Pakistan is that Pakistan is inshallah going to become a member of the United Nations Security Council, non-permanent member for two years, starting January 1st, 2025. For two years, we have to play a role on the big diplomatic canvas, not just representing our region, not just representing the Muslim countries, not just representing the developing countries, but the reality of the global south, countries of Asia, Africa, Latin America. And I myself had the opportunity when I was studying in Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., in the School of Foreign Service, my professor, my academic advisor, was the top Africa expert of the United States of America, Dr. Chester Crocker. He was a top Africanist, and then he became the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs under President Ronald Reagan. And so he was my uh, chief academic advisor, my tutor, my mentor, and so I learned a lot from Africa. I studied about China and Africa when I was studying in America, in Georgetown. And also, uh, as in my student days, I had formed the Pakistan Committee for Afro-Asian Solidarity, Next year, 2025, we'll be celebrating 70 years of the Bandung Conference, which was organized by President Sukarno in 1955 in April. And 29 Asian African countries took part in that. And Pakistan's delegation was led by Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra Sahib at that time. And that was the first meeting of Pakistani leaders with leaders of China, Premier John Lai was there, leaders of Africa, they were there, Jamal Abdul Nasser and others were there. So we have had that important, the Bandung spirit is now being revived. And I just met the Indonesian Consul General who was here <coughs> uh, uh, at breakfast. And I was telling him, I spoke to him a bit of in uh, Bahasa Indonesia. He said, how do you know? I said, my father was Pakistan's first military attaché under the days of President Sukarno, Colonel Amjadu Sen Sayyid Saab. And he played a pivotal role in developing close relations with Indonesia and Pakistan. And my father uh, and my late mother, m m m Madam Samin Sayyid Sahib, she was very close to uh, Sukarno's wife, Madam Fatma Fatmawati. They spoke Indonesian. He got the highest military award from uh, in, uh, Dr. Sukarno. And he helped build that relationship with Indonesia which was previously closer to India, that in 1965 war, Indonesia stood like a rock. And he said, uh, do you know Jakarta well? I said, I still have, remember my house on 42 Jalan Dipo Nagoro, <laughs> which is one of the main <laughs> boulevards of uh, Jakarta. So it's important that Pakistan develop this kind of relationship. And then when I was Minister for Information, Culture and Tourism, I had the great privilege of being the minister in, in waiting to the great Nelson Mandela. He came for four days, I was there. My wife, Dr. Dushka Sayyid, was the lady in waiting to his daughter, Princess Zinani, and we spent four days with uh, Mandela Sahib. He also gave his book inscribed to me with his autograph. And he said that in their freedom struggle, one of the inspirations of South Africa was, he said, your great leader, Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. So this is Mandela, he was saying that. So, you know, we have that kind of a broad relationship and it was Mandela who supported us in Kashmir in 1998. So we have to take this forward. And the third context, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk of this initiative on Africa, is the huge global change. We are very lucky that we're living in a time of not just turbulence, but also transformation. And this transformation that is happening in human history 
in the international political arena is amazing and outstanding. And I'll just give you a few examples of that. Last week I was reading The Economist and they have a cover story. Those of you who read The Economist would have seen it. The global order established by the West after the Second World War seems to be now coming apart. This is what The Economist has written. President Xi Jinping met President Putin. Anatoly is here. He's the trade representative of Russia. I just went to your country, sir, and I had good meetings with your leaders. And I'm going again next month to Vladivostok because the BRICS conference is being held in Vladivostok. And I'm the first Pakistani to be invited to the BRICS because we are not formally a member, but in my own capacity as an observer. And I was invited last year also to South Africa for that purpose. And President Xi Jinping told Putin, President Putin, we are witnessing changes in the world which have not been seen in the last 100 years. Not seen in a century. And I was reading an article by for, uh, the Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, in the Foreign Affairs, which is a very prestigious American journal. And he said, the world is witnessing epochal tectonic change. Tectonic change, which is, you know, it's like an earthquake. The tectonic plates shift. And the most important statement was given by the President of France last August, addressing French ambassadors in Paris. And he said, and this is very, very important, and I quote, 300 years of Western hegemony is coming to an end. 300 ki ka khatma ho That is the huge change. And this was predicted 90 years ago by the great Alama Iqbal. Dekh mashrik se uberte hoi suraj ko dekh. Asian century. Garakhaab chini samalne lage. Himala ke chashme ubalne lage. Gya dor sarmaya dari gya. Tamasha dekha ke madari gya. 90 years ago, Iqbal had predicted this thing. So this huge change, we are at the center stage. Yes, Tariq sahab, we are mired in our own problems, but it's about vision. Himmat honi chahiye, dam hona chahiye, jaan honi chahiye. That is what takes you forward. And we've done it. 1965, Pakistan had the war with India. And Pakistan was an ally of the United States. But we befriended China. China supported us. The US did not. And the Americans were very angry with us. And Ayub Khan went to see President Johnson in the White House in November 65. And President Johnson was from Texas. And he was, could be rough also. He said, look here, you guys. The Pakistanis, you are our, supposed to be our friends, but you are flirting with the Chinese. At that time, flirtation was a bad word. <laughs> you are flirting with the Chinese. <laughs> and uh, we can't tolerate the red Chinese, the communist China is the enemy. He, Field Marshal Ayub Khan, to his credit, said, look here, Mr. President, if we break with America, we will damage our economy. But if you break with China, we will damage our country. And that's a red line for us. 65. 1979, October, Foreign Minister Aga Shahi goes to Washington for talks. America's Secretary of State, they have formal talks, then he takes him aside. Whenever they have to give a warning, the Americans take you alone, separately. What <laughs> dronically. And Mr. Aga Shahi was there. And he said, Mr. this was told to me by Akashai Sahib because he was my uh, very good, I treat him, almost call him my mentor, great respected person. And as you know, he was de deputy commissioner in Thatta also. People in Thatta still remember Akashai Sahib as a very good administrator. Both brothers, Aga Hilali Sahib was in Washington. So Shai Sahib said that he was there and uh, uh, they brought in an, their own top negotiator who was with the Soviet negotiation arms talks, Gerard Smith. And in the room separately, they said, Mr. Foreign Minister, do you know what you're doing? And the voice was raised. And 
Shai Saab, you know, he was smoking his pipe, very soft spoke, and he's from Bangalore, very dimi was smiling with his glasses. You are, Mr. Foreign Minister, you are entering the valley of death by building the bomb. We know what you are doing in Kahuta. Kahuta was kept secret by Bhutto Saab for three years, but then it was discovered in 79. We started the project in 75, late 76. So the, the CIA did not know, but then they discovered it. And so this was the kind of pressure we faced. And the same, when he reported back, our system, General Zia was the president, he said, look at the site where we will test the nuclear bomb. And the Chagi site was selected in October 1979 by Dr. Ashwak Ahmed personally. And we knew we'll do the test, we'll make the bomb. So this is the spirit which Pakistan has had. We have had that courage, but then you have to have leadership with courage, conviction and commitment, which can see that through. And I think that people who are gathered here, the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, people are doers. And uh, I've met uh, Beg Saab, who is the uh, Honorary Consul General of Morocco, Tawab Saab, who is the Consul General of uh, Ethiopia. So, yeah, people who are leaders in the women who have, I've met uh, here, Rana Fancy is here, Dr. Aisha Khan is here, others are here. These are jaan dar log hain. Logo mein jaan hai. Kaum mein current hai, kyaadat zara kamzor hai abhi. To aisi ko baad nahi hai. It will take us forward. We, we have the spirit, but we have to have that uh, himmat. And we have done it in the past. And uh, Khizr Saab, you were mentioning about uh, the Sindh investment. Uh, I was chairman of the parliamentary committee on CPEC. And there were issues. Port Qasim ka tha, KT Bandar ka tha, Karachi Circle Railway tha. And Kaim uh, Alisha Saab said, because on the Sayyid grid, I have good relations with the Sayyids of Sindh. <laughs> Including Khadam Alisha, Kaim Alisha, Ghaus Alisha, Murad Alisha, <laughs> and all the big Shahs who are there. And also Sayyid Ghulam Mustafa Shah Saab, who was president of the Sayyid Association of Sindh. So he told me that Shah Saab, because they didn't have good relations at that time with Islamabad, and when Mia Saab was the prime minister. So we served as the bridge, and Sindh provided us the opportunity. They resolved the con issue of Port Qasim with the Chinese, because it was a land issue, federal government and provincial government, and also other issues. So I think that uh, Karachi, I remember, we used to be the hub for the whole region in terms of connectivity in terms of airline connectivity, in terms of trade, in terms of culture. So I think that uh, Pakistan's rightful role has to be restored and that is why it's the 21st century, it's the era of the global south, the global balance of economic and political power, ladies and gentlemen, is shifting from the west to the east. And it's the rise of the global south, not just China, not just Asia, but Africa. And Nadra Panjwani Sahib has pointed it out very well with statistics and so has Tariq Ikram Sahib. So in that context, we will take it forward. But I always believe, my motto has always been teamwork and homework. And in the spirit of teamwork, I would say that we are proud of our association with the Karachi Council of Foreign Relations. And we would like to take it forward because it cannot be a one-man show. We try to have one-man show, they have failed all the time whether it's the Fauji's or the civilians, because they think we know everything. They don't, and they fail. So, and the failure is apparent in different areas, even today. So in that regard, we would like to have cooperative arrangements. And I would request that the Karachi Council of Foreign Relations, Madam, we can have Ikram Saab with the Paidar. Let us do events together. Let us make this a platform not just for promoting Pakistan's interests or image in Africa or soft power, but for trade, for investment. Tawab Saab, Beg Saab, Aap bhi. Aap to aapke bhai Saab bhi parliament mein hai. Lekin you have to be him. Uh, Islamabad is where the action is. And we are your voice there. Take it forward. These are opportunities we have to seize. And those opportunities are there for us. Hamara rona dhona bhot hota hai. Mein agree karta hon Tariq Ram Saab se. हर दफा हम रोते हैं कि जी मारे गए साजिश हो रही है कोई साजिश नहीं हो रही सिर्फ हमारी नलायकी है या बदनियति है इट्स ऑल देयर आई रिसेंटली आई क्रिटिसाइज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर व्हेन ही सेड इन जद्दा एट दैट कॉन्फ्रेंस दैट पाकिस्तान हैज द बिगेस्ट करप्शन हमारा फेल हो गया सिस्टम एवरीथिंग इज इन अ शैंबल्स एवरीथिंग ट्रस्ट मैं कह ये रोना दोना बंद करें सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम बी द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्वर्स वी नो व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम 
provide the solution that is what we are and the solution lies in pakistan koi biden nahi aayega koi aur nahi aayega biden waise bhi ja raha hai trump aa raha hai abhi 5 november ko inshallah <laughs> so we have to decide our own destiny and i am proud of oman sultanate of oman they are hosting ladies and gentlemen there are two muslim countries who are providing medical assistance for the palestinian freedom fighters jo zakhmi hain ek turki hai ek oman so we are proud of that that is the spirit you khauf nahi hota president roosevelt said and this is the last thing i would say there is nothing to fear but fear itself ki wo imf kya kahega america kya kahega flana kya kahega india kya karega you do your own thing no there is no external threat to pakistan so we have to be the masters of our own destiny and build a better tomorrow inshallah for pakistan for the region for the global south for africa a better tomorrow with no overlords and no underdogs thank you very much